Aloha everybody, how's everybody doing? Uh, good evening on this Sunday Lapule, Sunday evening. Um, we got Philip and John with me here. Um, we did, uh, you know, we, we went out and kind of investigated the um, channelized flows and it is actually pumping harder than the last couple days that we were there um, flows are if you match up my videos from earlier this week like uh, two days and three days ago to now you can definitely see tonight was flying a lot faster um, the volume is still high from Fisher 8 um, and there's tons of lava that is headed towards Kapoho so that's uh that's what's happening. Hold on, let me see if I feel a band better John. Good evening. Pretty so, late. <laughs> so so Philip what was our findings tonight? Well yeah, that's what you just said, yeah. I, I got a chance to look at a video from five days ago from a different different source and same things in the same spot that we we're able to look at and flow is moving a lot faster tonight than it was in the video we saw. Uh, there's fluctuations happening in between, so I, I don't know what happened if it went up or down, but there's definitely a lot of stuff been it's moving really fast. Yeah. And we're all thankful that it's staying in a well-established channel, and you know, we didn't see any kind of spillovers, anything like that, you know, um, thankfully. What about better John? What do you think? Uh, it's overwhelming sight, and it's absolutely good that it's staying in the well-established channel, so we were trying to look at things that could give us an indication of uh, if it's excavating into the channel or building up on the brims, having those kind of academic debate. But what impressed me the most, or the impression I had, was that with the boulders traveling through the river of lava, and in any case, the level of the lava is above the surrounding ground. So people just got to be aware that the levees, if they do break, it could become a very fast flow. There's so much lava. And so just standing at, the, being that close to it, it was scary. It was very scary trusting this little berm of lava rock and the incredible power that's just on the other side of it was, yeah. So the levees are stable, but we got to recognize it's not altogether stable. It can break. And the, so that was my impression the whole time I was there. It's like, how much do I want to trust this levy? <laughs> so, right. very scary. Yeah, and the boulders are really interesting. I mean, we saw boulders, I mean, yeah. we saw videos of bigger boulders than we saw tonight. Mm -hmm. You know, things that are sticking out of the channel of lava. You know, like by I don't know how far, but yeah, immense, a good amount, a couple of yards at least, sticking out of the channel. So they're flowing or not stuck in the bottom. Some of them are kind of rolling and dragging. So right. those things are moving through slower than the main flow is moving. The main flow kind of flows around them, but it pushes them around too. We also saw several that, uh, we mostly saw ones that you couldn't see the top of. They're completely submerged Below, within the river, yeah. right? So you'd see a standing wave, kind of, you see a big rock in a river, you'd see a standing wave over top of that rock. But that standing wave moves. You kind of see it move over time as a boulder is rolling underneath that surface of the river of lava, right? So we don't know how, what size of shape it is exactly, but you can see it move slower than the surface. And those are the things that maybe are the most concerning because right. if one of those actually wedges in or enough of those wedge in any particular spot, then you can start diverting a flow. Right, so that's kind of where the real danger probably lies. Yeah. If, if those things are moving through there, which we know they are, we saw them, you know, we saw, we saw them moving, the evidence we of them there. moving in there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. These standing waves are talking about, maybe, you know, maybe, they're not massive, but you know, like, you know, maybe one or two yard, two meters tall, like yeah. standing waves within the river of lava itself. So there's some big, Big boulders within the flow that you don't actually see, they're all moving through them as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, what, what, what do you think the speed of the flow was tonight? Oh, that's I have I have a hard time guessing a realistic number, I think, you know, but, but it was moving. And I, I, can, I can say it was fast, faster than I expected it to be moving. Yeah. You know? yeah. yeah. I'd say definitely faster than you can run comfortably, so that puts it at 20 miles an hour or more, you yeah. know, I was just trying to imagine if I tried to keep pace with the crust on the surface of the lake, even where we were, you know, it, it'd be a pretty fast run to try and keep close of it on a flat ground, yeah. so that that should put it near 20 miles an hour. People don't run a lot faster than that. Yeah, I, mean, <laughs> so, yeah, I, yeah, I agree I agree with that. Yeah. It's a good way to 
Yeah, we, yeah I, I, you know, I, I've been there for quite four or five times. Wow. And every time I got been there, it's been moving a lot. That's, you know, it's moving faster and faster. And what do you think about the volume? You think it's still high or? Because it, it, it seems still, still at the same volume or even maybe a pulsing in certain times of the day where it's higher and lower. Yeah, that, that wouldn't be surprising if it is posting. Yeah, I mean, I, I can't judge on the volume having only seen, you know, only having seen it the one time compared to any other times, but I take your word that you, yeah. you do see that, you know. And we were talking, John and I were talking about this, you know, like how much can you trust the volume changing? You know, we see there's, a, there's multiple channels, the flow splits. Sometimes the flow on one side of the channel might actually be increasing and that's other side might be decreasing or it can flip back and forth. It's hard to see maybe a boulder is kind of pushing more flow on one side and the other. And that's the kind of thing that's a lot it's quite uncertain. I mean, yeah. you know, it gives us reason for concern. Is we right. don't, you know, we don't know like what might be happening. But know what below the surface of that. Right. You know, if there's two branches and one suddenly gets clogged, or you know, that's it's so dynamic, unpredictable. You know, standing yeah. next to it, realizing like looking upstream, is there a boulder coming that's gonna change the bank while I'm standing here? It's very scary. And when the geologists measure volume. They're only able to do that right near the fountain, right? They need to see the whole channel at once for those reasons, right? right. I would imagine, yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't know exactly how they're doing It's it. hard to judge from lower down on the river if the volume is changing because it's so dynamic and fluctuating, just like you described, so. Yeah, yeah, and it's, we, we don't know how much is actually cutting down or melting down or a combination of those two things, you know, how much deeper the, the channel is actually getting, you know, but we, knew, we do know it is fairly deep you yeah know? and you know I grew up with big rivers I'm from the Rockies in the west and like for anybody at home this is bigger than the South Fork of the Snake River it's probably not as deep as the Snake River but like the power behind it watching that much material in motion it's it's a it's a river river it's an unbelievable unbelievable so you know what I know you got gotten new, some new updates and some maps. Want to share that with us here, Phil? Yeah. So well, the, the, the update we just had a new update come up on USGS. Yeah, there's a new text update that basically um, says that the fissure eight is still spattering between 60 and 165 feet, and feeding lava into the well-established channel. So there's not much change there. They say 16, 18 is still losing lava, um, and there is glow and spattering from six. That's on the left side of the webcam that you can see. And otherwise, not much change in the size and shape. We did see in a thermal imagery that was released yesterday. Let me pull that one up here. There's a, the thermal image that was released, I believe, yesterday. That's right. Mm -hmm. So you yesterday, can, 6 a.m. You can see there's, you know, there's a pretty distinct line between the light and the dark, right? So the flow isn't really leaving its banks anywhere. A little bit over here in the last few days that you guys reported on. Yeah. You kind of see what that looks like a couple days later. But it's pretty well contained within that channel most of the way until you get down here to the Kapoho area, right? And then here is where it spreads out. Where it's really, you can see it's spread out. But even still, it hasn't spread out as far as it was before. There's an interesting little snake that's happening down here, right? And one thing we also heard reported is that the main ocean entry plume is now, at least tonight, compared to last night, a little farther south than it was. Yeah. South. Yeah, so it's, that's also changing as we speak. Yeah, but down here is where it really spreads out and it's maybe going multiple directions, right? And this su southern flow is the one at Europe, any Yeah. That's actually moving the fastest of, of the boundaries of the edge of the flow, right? Yeah. Wow. So that's, that's, that's what we know from the thermal image. Um, we had some reports of glow tonight as well, like farther down and on these old flows down here yeah so we're not sure what's happening down there but so we got reports this 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 evening we got reports this evening by some people uh that was uh down there kind of reliable uh sources um also one that were, he used to work for uh, hawaii volcanoes national park he was down in the area and um he's seen some glow coming by mackenzie state park could have been fires, but he said that there was a plume also coming out of the ocean. Mm -hmm. So that was a report that we had from a, from a homeowner and a, a kind of reliable source in that area. Yeah, 
So we gotta wonder if, you know, if these 16 to 18 are doing something funny. You know, we saw from the last thermal imagers before this mm -hmm. previous one that there was just some tiny, some tiny flows, the nosebleed flows, you guys have been calling yeah. it. But, you know, maybe there is, maybe it's trying to get back on the tube over there. It's, mm -hmm. I don't know, I don't have enough information, you know, but that is something that's feasible that could yeah. happen if it puts out enough lava that it could do something like that. Mm -hmm. So we hope not. We'll figure out. We'll figure out what the truth is there, and you know, we'll let you guys know as soon as we know for sure what's happening. But we do. Yeah, I've had heard. You know, some areas of concern. You know, there's more concern down here than we might have had yesterday, for example. Right. right? So where my beach? Um, we're not. You know, right now the lava is actually contained right now in, in the channelized um, perch, perch walls of the channelized flow. Um, right now it's not breaching at all. So that's a good thing. Yeah. Uh, by, by what we've seen tonight, it's all contained inside of the channelized flow. So that's a yeah. good thing. We've seen some little, little flows come off of it, but that's, that's minor. Yeah, I mean, those are good. We want those because they help build up the banks taller and taller yeah. and taller. Yeah. Right. So that's, those are good. Yeah. Stay in the channel, number eight. <laughs> so Bryson Cinder Quarry would be right around here. Yep. Right here, Cinder Pit Low. So the Cinder Pit will be right here. Right. Yep. It's not headed to Isaac Holly Beach Park or uh, Pohoiki, so Pohoiki is kind of okay right now. Could the earthquakes break the lava walls? Yes. <laughs> if we had a strong earthquake, the small threes, twos and threes and fours, probably not, but if we had another one like a 6.9, yeah, it could. Um, but that's something that maybe we shouldn't stress ourselves out about, you know, because the earthquakes, we don't know when a strong quake will happen. We shouldn't stay up at night wondering if an earthquake is gonna break the walls. If there's a breach, it'll be for more localized region reasons probably the dynamics within the river of lava is more likely than an earthquake breaking it but an earthquake that was powerful could change the situation yeah, yeah. yeah. especially if it was if it was an earthquake that happened close to where the river actually is underneath that area right so yeah. what, we, what we experienced recently is all earthquakes from the summit yeah so here's another thing how many earthquakes have we had in the last couple weeks that have not broken any walls not much and we've had a lot of those fives right so uh, we know that that's not big enough probably at least if yeah. it's happening at the summit oh, that's yeah, not big point. enough for it to crack anything down here so if this keeps doing what it's doing at the summit those earthquakes are not something that i'd personally be worried about right. breaking any of the channel walls down here like six nine as you say would be a different story yeah if it was a really big one that's a lot more energy being released yeah one time. so another question from the ocean entry those flows that is on the south side of Kapo, can it reach a Halanui beach park um, we, we don't, you know, we haven't, we, you know, boots, we don't have any boots on the ground in that area, so we really don't know how fast that flows are moving uh, through the forested areas here. Yeah. So we're not too sure how fast it's moving. Uh, it's about, about a, nah, less than a mile away from, from uh, Ahonui, but, you know, uh, that's, that's, we really don't know how fast the flows are moving. Yeah, I know we'll probably have to do some work to get there, right? Because everywhere along that area, there is a drop off into the coast. So if it hits the coast anywhere, it's gonna divert a lot of from keeping moving south that direction. Yeah. So we might have more ocean entry points farther down before we have any real threat of it crossing all the way across. Yeah, so I, I would say that right now, it's not under threat. I mean, we're all obviously keeping a close eye on it and we're concerned about that, but it seems more likely that downhill is almost always towards the ocean right. in most places. Yeah. Okay, so another this is a good question. Um, how safe is Nano Valley? At, at this time, from, Nano Valley is okay. From lava, it's yeah. It's, it's at safe. this time, we're safe. Yeah, yeah. go yeah. ahead and be safe tonight. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The gases are all, all an ongoing issue, right? So you know, depending on how where you draw your safety line, you know, we're safe from lava, but the gases are going to be an issue constantly, especially when the winds are changing. So just the spooky part is this part right here. Yeah, that elbow. But yeah. as of right now, all the lava is contained, so... Yeah, anyway, and we still have this ridge is still here, even if it's not as tall as it used to be beyond the flow, it's still there. And before we 
start worrying about Nanavale, we wouldn't like to see, we would have to see something changing in this area first, right? Just yeah. over, filling this little gap first before we were seriously concerned about that. So it's, we brought up the possibility because we want people to be prepared if something were to happen to not have to pack everything at the last minute, you know, it's going to be organized, especially now. Yeah. But we're not really that concerned about that happening right now or anytime real soon. We would have to do something different first and we're seeing stability more than anything else has been the pattern of the last couple of weeks. Yeah. So yeah. another question is can Fisher 9 and 10 or 10 be just as active as 8? Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, they could be active. Yeah. I mean, we don't see that signs of that, you know, and I think USGS is worried about that happening as well. That's why they're measuring those and the 130 cracks, you know, daily, at least daily, right? And there's been no change. You know, as long as it stays open, yeah. and you know, we actually have seen more spots of fountaining, right? Instead of right. having just being a single or double fountain, we've actually had a third or fourth different yeah. spots all together coming up. So that would indicate that it's still open enough to let even yeah. with more volume coming through. There's enough space for it to all get out, even if it's coming out next to eight. It's not coming out of anywhere else right now. So that's all good sign as far. So yes, it could happen. Yeah. There's no sign of it happening. And we should mention that if another fisher like 9 or 10 became active and became the main source, most likely 8 would go down. Most likely we wouldn't have two of them going like 8. There's probably a give and take of the pressure, right? Yeah, so, yeah, I think so, yeah. so that's another factor. Yeah. Assuming that the amount coming through the system is still the same. It's right? still the same, yeah. Right. That's is. something we don't, don't really... I mean, no. when we see of the signals, we don't there's anything... There's not like a big surge coming like we had a few weeks ago when we knew the surge was coming. Yeah. So we're still in, a, in the in the midst of that. The middle of it. Bulk of the flow coming through the, the system. Wow. Yeah. All right, guys. So that's the, just the evening update and what's going on in our community. And um, we leave you with this. We. It's kind of getting late for us. We look out of drive home, John. Tired. Drive home, tired. <laughs> but um, so everybody, um, we'll be doing some updates tomorrow, and we'll be going back in the field and looking, uh, checking out some stuff, and making sure things are going according to plan. Yeah, we'll keep an eye on it. Yeah, we'll yeah, be keeping so, an eye yeah, on it. Yeah, see you guys. Yeah. All right, guys. Right. One moment at a time. Stay classy, Puna. Stay classy. Aloha. Aloha. <laughs>